You're listening to episode 81 of Lifestyle Locker Radio with Kimberly Maravich. When we have cancer, our body is inflamed. There's no other way to, to say that. You know, it's just that our cells at the very DNA become inflamed and then start to mutate. Hi, I'm Dr. Josh Han, and welcome to the Lifestyle Locker Radio, where we dive into what makes an awesome lifestyle. From relationships to money mindset, nutrition to fitness, emotional health to peak performance, we bring you on an amazing journey to unleashing your human potential. So here's a little bit about our guest today. Kim is a registered nurse, health blogger, and author of the book 360 Health, your guide to cancer prevention, healing foods, and total body wellness. She graduated magna cum laude from Wittenberg University with a degree in English. She went on to study nursing and upon graduation worked in cardiac care. Her experience as an RN led her to passion for preventative health care and nutrition. Kim also has a master's degree in teaching and worked for more than 12 years in public education. She now combines her talents and enjoys educating and encouraging others to optimize their health through her writings. Kim has been featured in numerous podcasts and local magazines. It is her mission to spread the word about cancer prevention and ways to live optimally. Kim lives outside Pittsburgh, PA, with her loving husband and two adorable little boys. So here she is, Kimberly Maravich. Okay, everyone, today we have Kim in the locker room. You heard her bio. She's got a really cool story, um, which she's going to share with you in a minute. She's also got a great book, um, which I actually want to start just reading one of the quotes she starts with, and it's, The tragedy of life is not death, but what we, lo- what we let die inside of us while we live. And that's by Norman Cousins, and that's so powerful. You know, we think death is the end, and a lot of people are dying for years, right? So welcome. Sorry, I just wanted to, you know, I love that quote. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Josh. It's wonderful to be here. I've been looking forward to the conversation. Yeah. So, Kim, so we have uh, a lot in common, and I know you've been, you said, brought up and grown up in, in the, the other paradigm, you know, from where, where I grew yep. up, which I think is so neat because you've kind of like jumped to the, the opposite side of the fence here, and you get to see, right. you've seen both sides of the fence, right? And, and in your book- That's right. Um, you, you speak about cancer and all these really cool things and steps you can do and being proactive in life. And that's what I really want to have a conversation about because cancer hits home to a lot. I mean, I, I, almost every family probably in the U.S. has somebody that either has had or has cancer. So I think this is going to be a neat conversation. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, um, that was one of the main reasons I wanted to, to write the book. Um, was because cancer was has affected my family, was affecting my family at the time. Um, and like you said, it hits home for so many people. And uh, as you mentioned, I'll tell my, my background story in just a moment, but I yeah, did, please. I was in a traditional medical background. Um, my background is as a registered nurse. And so I was in that kind of like that sick care realm for a long time. And really my passion has always been towards prevention, just a personal interest of mine. Um, and it just became, um, overwhelming to me to just constantly be in, in that sick environment. Um, but at the same time, you know, even though this naturopathic kind of holistic, uh, medicine interest has been of personal interest to me, uh, most people in, in my world, you know, don't fall in that category. You know, my family really isn't that way, my friends. So the book that I wrote, I really wanted to focus it um, on cancer prevention, but so that it was a book for the masses, not just for people who are already interested in, um, you know, holistic nutrition and things like that. Yeah, which is great because yeah. it, you, can, you can touch a lot, of, a lot of hearts and minds that way. Right, right. Yeah. So if you want, I can just talk about my, my background and what yeah, got me to writing the book. <laughs> well, before okay. the, let's go like pre-book because, you know, as a registered yeah. nurse, okay. that's a very different world than this mm-hmm. other side. I mean, you have to, it's like the, the thinking, sure. the, the processes that people go through in health and gaining their health back or keeping health are very different on, on either paradigm. 
Right, exactly. So yes, I was a registered nurse and and I actually worked in a cardiac care unit. Um, however, you know, when someone has one disease, they often have many. So I did take care of a lot of patients that had cancer as well. Um, but pretty quickly after I started um, working in the hospital, I knew that I did not like it. <laughs> I loved nursing school. And one of the reasons I loved nursing school was because we did talk about, you know, the body, um, how it functions and, you know, how it can heal itself. Um, my favorite class was anatomy and then nutrition. Um, you know, I had a couple of nutrition and that really, I just remember sitting in class and thinking, yeah, I love this. I love this. I want to learn more. Well, then you get into the clinical setting and it's like, oh, that's not what this is about. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people are really, really sick. You know, anymore people who are admitted to the hospital are pretty gravely ill, um, unless it's for an observation, you know, that might be a one night thing. But if someone is not really sick, they won't be admitted. So basically, I was taking care of people who had multiple illnesses. And because I was in cardiac care, every day was like an emergency. Um, you know, you never knew what was going to happen. You never knew if someone was going to code. And in fact, if someone, if there was a code blue anywhere in the hospital, we had to run to that code blue because we were the cardiac nurses. And so that level of stress just wore on me. And and really, I honestly would be driving to work some days and be so sick to my stomach that I have to pull over. I just was so nervous. And I, I'm an anxious person <laughs> to yeah. begin with. So just working in that environment was not good for my health either. And so I knew that I wanted to uh, leave that clinical setting. And, you know, I could have gone into something else. I could have gone to work at a doctor's office, although, you know, that doesn't, you don't make a whole lot of money. And at the time I wasn't married and I just, I really wasn't sure what I wanted um, to do, but I knew I needed to leave that. So this sounds kind of strange, but I went off on a tangent and went back to school and got my master's in teaching and I completely changed careers and went and worked in a public school setting for over 12 years. Um, and my mom had been a teacher too. So I just, I knew I wanted to be in a helping environment, but I needed to do something that for me was a little bit more uplifting. Um, I think, you know, this, that was back in uh, what, 2002. And so I think if, if there would have been all these options back then, I would have probably gone more into like a preventative healthcare kind of realm, you know, mm -hmm. Um, even like there weren't like a whole lot of like even bloggers to speak of back then. And certainly, you know, health coaching and that kind of stuff, wasn't a thing. Um, so for me, I just, I left and I did something different for a while, but I was always super interested. You know, I was always subscribing to, to journals and reading about nutrition on my own. You know, I always joke that I'm that person on the beach who, who's not reading a novel, who's reading like a book on diet or, yeah, you know, well, nutrition or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Cause that's just, it was of interest to me, but you know, all along I kept my nursing license. Um, I didn't want to let that go because I wasn't sure how my, that might come into play. So I always took the continuing education classes and, um, you know, renewed my license every couple of years. Um, so fast forward to, um, I, you know, I got married. I had my first son. Um, you and I were talking off the air. Right. I'm a little bit of an older mom. I had my first son at 38. Um, and I did go back to teaching after that, but found it pretty hard to juggle. My husband travels an awful lot and he was gone, um, a lot. And so then I was having to you know, juggle home life and, you know, getting my son to and from school. And then, the day I went back to, to work after having him, I found out I was pregnant with my second son. So I spent that entire school year pregnant and kind of, and it wasn't the uh, greatest pregnancy. I had some, complica some complications along the way. Um, but just after he was born, I decided to stay home. So I resigned. Um, it was just a better decision for my family in general. So I, I decided to stay home. But because I was an older mom, I'm having my second son at 40, um, and having worked for so long uh, before having kids, it was it was hard. You know, I'm just kind of yeah. like, well, now who I who am I? You know, because I uh, was this working person, and, and now I'm staying at home. And not that I didn't love it, but I just felt like I was kind of losing a part of myself, maybe. And I think many moms feel that way. <laughs> you know, when you have kids, it becomes all about them. Um, but just as 
for kind of like a hobby for like an outlet. And again, this sounds weird for, for some people, but, but it was good for me. I started writing articles, um, about nutrition and health. Um, and I was just writing for a user generated website, which basically anybody could write for you just pick your, your niche, your topic and write articles. Um, so again, I was writing about nutrition primarily, some health things, um, and of interest to me were articles about superfoods. Um, and again, this was just something that was personally interesting. I wasn't really writing it for anybody. It was just more for me to do the research and then to write this article. And I just had fun doing it. Would kind of write when my my boys were napping or before they woke up in the morning. Well these articles started getting picked up by other websites. And I thought, well, you know, maybe th this could be like a little side gig, you know, while I'm at home with my, my kids, I you know, can write. So maybe I'm writing about things that people are interested in or in a way that resonates with people. Um, so I continued doing that. Um, and what became fascinating to me was that a lot of these foods that I was writing about were being studied in clinical settings um, but for their healing effects. And these, some of these foods were called anti-angiogenic foods. So when someone has cancer, angiogenesis occurs, and that is the abnormal blood, forma blood vessel formation to cancerous tumors. So, you know, normally healthy cells, you know, have normal, normal vessels that grow and, and nourish them and feed them. But when a tumor forms, these kind of really, um, they're not healthy blood vessels, but they, they, they suck the life literally out of our bodies to give blood and oxygen to cancer. Um, but these foods that I was studying were studied to actually stop that from occurring, either stop the blood vessels from occurring in the first place um, or to kill off the uh, pre-existing cancer or precancerous cells that were already there. So that became uh, my interest in cancer prevention, first and foremost. Yeah, can I pause for a second? So that's yeah, absolutely. Really so you were, you know, we got nursing, and then you're you're become an educator, and you're teaching, you know, little mm -hmm. people, and mm -hmm. then you start reading about these superfoods, and you're like, okay. And I just come trying to think like, what you, what's in your head because of all of your nursing, you know, experience in yeah. school. Okay, this is the way things work, and then you're reading. Wait, hold on, food can actually help yeah. me like in it like this is like a big like holy cat it's got to be a like a like a aha moment yeah for sure and I think for me it wasn't as surprising as it is for a lot of people because again I've been somebody who's always been interested in nutrition and so having done reading and listening to podcasts like yours for mm -hmm. for a long time you know, I was pretty aware of that, but I did not think the general population knew about that. But I also didn't know that food could actually turn off, like literally stop the blood flow to cancerous tumors. I did not know that. And I figured most people didn't know that either. Yeah. And that was the stance I wanted to take. So the book began that way. The manuscript began with nutrition, but then I broadened it to many, many other topics, uh, not to other topics, but other ways of preventing cancer because I wanted it to be um, an all encompassing work. Um, around the same time, and today is actually the one year anniversary of my mother-in-law passed away one year ago today okay. um, of cancer. And I was writing this book I was finished. Well, I had already started and it was well into it. Um, but just a little side story about that. She had had lymphoma 20 years ago and went through chemo and radiation and all that. And then, um, you know, maybe about two years ago, was starting to have these strange symptoms that the doctors weren't really, they were, she was misdiagnosed many, many things. She mm -hmm. was having headaches and then some um, gastric issues and you know, one doctor would say one thing, another would say another thing, and nobody really knew what was going on, and she was deteriorating. And we didn't find out definitively that she had cancer until about a month before she passed. Wow. And so I really wanted, to, it became my mission to spread the word not only about cancer prevention, but also about if you've already had cancer, what to look for. Because when you've already had cancer, unfortunately, you are prone, more prone than the general population to developing a second cancer down the road or to having it um, come back. Some of that has to do with the treatment, you know, because can't, um, radiation and chemotherapy do 
um, shut down our bodies for a time and can make us susceptible um, to developing that. But then also sometimes people don't really change their lifestyle after having a cancer diagnosis when they go through treatment, but they really don't change their diet or their exercise or anything. And yeah, so it's crazy. They're blocked. Yeah, right. So their bodies are still inflamed. Yeah. And it can and it can, you know, you know, show up again later down the road. So that was one of the reasons and you know, I do have dedication in my book is partially to her too because um it was just, you know, such a tragedy and so many families go through that and I just, you know, wanted to kind of give hope to people that, you know, there are ways that we can prevent it. Yeah. And in I mean, fact, 90 to 95% of cancers can be prevented, which is crazy totally. too to think. So the book is more inspirational really in a sense that you can you can actually take control of your life. I mean that's what it really comes down to, I think, is exactly. is where you know, where I'm just gonna chat for a second. I it's your stage right now, but um yeah. you know, what I see in my <laughs> sure. practice is, you know, people even rely on us um as their like as they're only as their healthcare provider and they're not doing things outside. And that's kind of part of the reason that I've brought this this lifestyle locker into 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 the light because you know what i've seen over my 11 years in practice my father's 40 years people do great with certain things but they neglect because they say okay i'm doing i'm doing exercise i don't need nutrition i got muscles look at me i mean like i can eat pop tarts mm -hmm. I'm great oh, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. work that way you know your body's right. like living Does breathing not. this really cool ecosystem that needs all of these things and um i think the your book kind of shows a lot of the e how the ecosystem works and can actually be helped right be get a stronger immune system stronger or just strength in general overall health and it, it just blows my mind that that people still turn away from things that are true that's right um you know i, I think that's exactly true and, and i don't I, I think that you know for you and i it's kind of like a no brainer. We know, you know, the foods to eat and we know that our lifestyle makes a difference, but sadly not everybody does and not everybody attributes the food that they're eating to illness. If you say somebody, um, you know, maybe you want to cut out the grains or the gluten because you're having joint pain. They look at you like you have three heads because mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense to them. You know, why would that have anything to do with my joint pain? No, I was a runner, you know, and that's why my knees hurt, yeah. you know, but there's so much more, <clears throat> excuse me, to the story than that. Um, <clears throat> and I just think that, you know, society, it, you know, sadly, um, the stand standard American diet is just that. It's sad. Um, it, we go into the grocery stores and it, that's not helping us at all. There are so many tempting things. You know, my son is in preschool now and the things that, you know, that are, that he's given at school for snacks that people bring in and, and all that. Um, it's just, it's, it's a part of the, the main culture. So really people like you and I are kind of like on the outskirts of it and hopefully bringing this message forward to, to other people. But I don't really think it's, you know, it's not, it's not as acceptable or understood as, you know, we would think. Yeah. And I would definitely say, I mean, people, as a whole, at least in the U.S., I mean, like a, a educated country, you know, I think people know they just it's just so much easier to get a bag of Doritos yeah. Yeah. than to eat it a is. pear or an yep. apple or have, you know, right. whatever, right. you know, something healthy, a smoothie or something like right. that. It's just there's less effort. Right. And we I think that's was yeah. created, you know, in like this almost like magic bullet society. It's like, you know, what can I have done faster? And now that we have. Like we're on mm -hmm. Skype right now, which is crazy because we're mm -hmm. hundreds of miles mm -hmm. apart, but we can have this conversation. Yeah. People want things like, you know, super fast. And um, right. I think that's only just helping create more of the, the same. <clears throat> and I think, you know, to your point, you know, about, for example, grabbing a bag of Doritos, you know, you think about people soothing in a way. And that's like, you know, those comfort foods, those things that are super palatable yeah. and, you know, salty and, or sugary or whatever. Um, we live in a, an environment that is also toxic due to stress. You know, oh, we have totally. so much stress today and that comes into play as well. So that might, you know, create dietary choices for us. Um, but also that contributes to disease because stress inflames us from the inside out too. Totally. And we know that diseases like cancer um, are all about inflammation and that, you know, when we have cancer, our body is inflamed. 
There's no other way to, to say that. Yeah. You know, it's just that our cells at the very DNA become inflamed and then start to mutate. Yeah. The system is, is failing because yeah. of what we're doing to That's ourselves. That's right. You know, That's mentally, right. physically, structurally, yeah. all of these things. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So in your book, you have, I mean, we have like 10 chapters in there that people go through. So do you have a couple, I know nutrition's like was was kind of like your mm -hmm. beginning, right? It was maybe one of your favorite right. topics. Right. Are, there, are there a few things, like a few sections that you think are, um, you can maybe share a little bit about that like you think are so important or maybe like the, the foundational pieces? Sure. For you um, at least? I, yeah, exactly. I think one thing that um, is really important and that can be simple, but people don't maybe think it's simple is just um, detoxifying our bodies. And I think when we talk about detoxification, people think that you're getting some kind of like potion off the shelf that you're just like mm. flushing your system and that you're going to be, you can't eat anything and that, mm -hmm. you know, going to do this like colon cleanse kind of thing. And it doesn't have to be like that. Um, you know, our bodies have built in detoxification systems. You know, we think about um, sweating. We, we think about, um, you know, peeing and pooping it out and, oh, yeah. um, our, you know, our livers, w uh, work to cleanse our body. So we, we have these built in systems. So what we can do is just to support those things and it can be really easy. And what I like to focus on for people is just simple things that they can do versus all the scaremongering tactics. You know, mm -hmm. we don't, there's so much in our environment. We, we should be scared of so many toxins and things. Um, and that's overwhelming, and that's definitely not my intention. I don't want to overwhelm people. So I think when we can talk about naturally detoxifying our bodies, and these are things that people have heard before, and they're nothing new, but maybe they don't, you know, quite get the reasoning behind them. But um, one thing, and I know we've talked, you've talked about it on your podcast before, is just increasing your water intake, your purified yeah. water intake. It is so important. There have been studies that have shown that breast bladder and colon cancer risk decreases with an increase of water. So it's inversely, inversely proportionate. Cool so the more, <laughs> yeah, it is exactly. Yeah. And there have been studies to show that. So the more water you're drinking, you're flushing out toxins. So the toxins have to go somewhere when you, because we're all going to get toxins. We all are exposed to them, whether even if we're eating the most organically and, you know, using clean household products and cosmetics and things. Um, it's still in the air we breathe um, and all around us. So, But if you can increase your water intake, that's helping to flush your body out. And it really does. It can really help to um, prevent cancer. So, um, and, you, and that's drinking more than you really think. You know, you hear people talking about, you know, eight glasses of water a day. It's more like 10 to 13. And if you're drinking coffee, you have to have an additional on top of that. Yeah. And coffee's, coffee's fine. I'm, I drink coffee and coffee is a potent um, antioxidant. You know, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I already had mine today, but yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, uh -huh. So it's not saying to give up your coffee, but it, you just need to then um, drink extra water to supplement with that. So just really um, drinking as much as you can. And then exercise is another thing. And again, people are like, oh, whatever, I've heard this before. But there are reasons, there are a lot of reasons why exercise comes into play. And one of the big things, and it doesn't have to be a lot. It's, I'm not asking, you know, this is like, you know, three to five times a week, getting your heart rate up and sweating. OK, so it doesn't have to you don't have to be running. You don't have to be doing anything super intense for cancer prevention. Yeah. You know, it's just so if you're sweating, you're getting you're releasing toxins through that. Um, when we're moving around, our cardiovascular system is pumping blood through our bodies, but it's also helping our lymphatic system to drain. Um, you know, you hear you hear of lymphomas or people having lymph nodes removed when they have cancer. Well, we need that system to drain. And that doesn't have they they don't it doesn't have a built in um, uh, movement system like our car, like our heart is always pumping and mm -hmm. so that moves our cardio our blood flow around but lymph doesn't have that so lymph flow occurs when we're moving so when we're sedentary that's not it's not working the the way that it should be so we need to be moving around to help our lymph system drain um, and then just exercise helps to lower estrogen which is important for men and women because. Uh, there are so many cancers that are uh, based on estrogen dominance, like breast and uterine and even prostate cancer for men. So exercise helps to do that um, and also helps with weight loss. And we store toxins in our fat. Um, so, we, it, you know, the less fat you have on your body, 
then the less toxins that are going to be stored in your body. So there's just a lot of reasons why exercise is really important too. And then on top of that, we talked about stress. Exercise helps to Burn reduce it. stress also. Exactly. I remember, um, you know, leaving work and some days I would be, I don't know, so upset about whatever. And I'd get to the gym and, you know, just go through, you know, my workout, whatever. And I'd leave and say, to myself, you know, why was I even, st I don't even remember what I was stressed about, you know, and it just, it kind of resets your mind and, you know, gets those good endorphins going. Um, so it's so important for so many reasons. Yeah. It increases um, so actually just, brain function as a whole. So that's, that's going to be yeah. awesome to fight cancer as well or prevent it or be proactive. So absolutely. Win. absolutely. Right. Exactly. So those are just, those are some really um, easy ways to detox. Um, you know, and then there are other things that, you know, we can even talk about later, but some of them can be dietary, like taking, um, like a sugar, like a break from sugar. Cause we know that sugar is super inflammatory and it's kind of at the heart of, um, every cancer that, that's been studied. So sugar will increase the likelihood of, um, you know, developing cancer because it creates inflammation. So if we take, you do like a sugar detox, um, you know, for a month or half a month or whatever, um, and then also some diets have been studied and shown to be beneficial in the fight against cancer, things mm -hmm. like the ketogenic diet mm -hmm. um, and also intermittent fasting um, is quite helpful um, in helping to what those two diets do is that they help to reduce um, the insulin levels in your body um, because insulin is is inflammatory in our body so that when we're not having these insulin surges you know sugar spikes and insulin surges all day long that's creating a lot of inflammation in our body so we can keep that more even keel so if you're eating ketogenic you're not getting these insulin surges and if you're doing intermittent fasting there's a whole period of time that your body's just working on healing itself it's not doing any digesting at all and doesn't have to think about that um, so those things have been really helpful not only in the uh, in prevention but also for people who already have cancer, that can help um, with the treatment. Um, so if someone's going through chemotherapy um, and they're doing intermittent fasting, it's been shown that that can actually benefit and help the chemo to go quicker, to be more effective and reduce the likelihood of the cancer coming back. Yeah, and for those of you that are listening that have not tried or heard of intermittent fasting, listen to a bunch of my podcasts. A lot of the guests will talk about it. I've been doing it myself. I'm not sure if you've been doing it, Kim, at all. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it for, God, now for years. You know, not I don't do it 24-7, or I haven't 24 I don't do it every all day, every day, every year, throughout the year. Um, but yeah. most days, I think four to five, six days a week, I'll go anywhere from 16 to 23 hours without wow. food. And yeah. You know, I'm a chiropractor, so I'm up and down, I'm moving, I'm walking in circles around my office mm -hmm. all day, and I'll even train while while I'm fasting, because it, like you talk about detoxing and cleaning, um, mm -hmm. it's so powerful, the amount of energy, people are like, are you tired? I go, no, I just ran 13 miles, I lifted weights, and now I'm <laughs> going to come home, and an hour later, I'll probably eat something. And they're like, well, how do you right. do that? I go, because I'm not dependent, like you said, on sugar, yeah, on these right. cravings, like, right. you know. So it's really yeah. something that I would highly encourage everybody to kind of, I'll put some links down below on it, um, but it's really a cool thing to do. So. And not only that is, I mean, you really can function on it. I, you know, just as a personal side, I, I do intermittent fasting. I had some adrenal issues after having my second son. So it, it was not good for me to do every day, but if I do it every other day and I do more like a 14 hour fast mm -hmm. that works for me, some people can go, what you could also do is, is fast like completely one or two days a week. And that can, that can work too for some people my who are like a, an all or nothing yeah, and that's very effective too. Um, but besides the insulin, you know, it's been shown that stem cells um, can regenerate when we're intermittent fasting too. So that can also help to boost our immune system. So there's a lot of cool things that are happening when we're not, when our bodies don't have to work on digesting food. Yeah. So, and in and, and your, I want to jump back into your book. So you have like, yeah. you have all these, I mean, like again, with the 10 chapters, is. There's a few. Obviously, there's one that mentions chiropractic, which we'll bring up because I, I love talking about <laughs> that for a few minutes at least. But yeah, um, you have things like you know, uh, vitamins and supplements to consider. Mm -hmm. We just I mean we spoke about like the foods to limit and avoid, and you mentioned mm -hmm. you mentioned foods that heal already, like some of the superfoods. 
But yeah. can you give us some examples of like, you know, if someone were to add, like add these two things to your diet, to your daily, you know, food regimen or weekly, whatever mm -hmm. it may be, that will just be help their immune system or help just be proactive against cancer? Sure. I, th I think, you know, you can never go wrong with dark leafy greens um, just because of um, all of the potent antioxidants in them and the high levels of folate. So I think just like upping your vegetable, I always just say, you know, try to get as many servings of vegetables in during the day as you can. Um, I think that's that's a really important one. Um, I one thing that that has that's of interest to me lately, and there's a lot of research on. This is an ancient food, but mushrooms um, yeah. are really important. And you've probably heard of the company Force Sigmatic uh -huh. um, that that you know makes the coffees and stuff. And I'm what I, I am not affiliated with the company, but yeah. I just really like their products. Um, and their website is really good. Um, for explaining why these mushrooms have healing properties. You know, people have been foraging for centuries for mushrooms, mm -hmm. but um, um, specifically um, reishi, cordyceps, myotaki mushrooms, they, they've all been studied um, and shown to be beneficial. So even if you don't like eating them, you, you can buy these cool products that, you know, they're infused yeah. in coffee and hot chocolate. And, yeah, and they taste, that it are, doesn't taste like kind of, a mushroom. To, no, it know, doesn't at all. all. No, Weird, it just tastes like, you know, the typical, <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. So, um, I think, you know, another one that's, I think it's pretty cool and it's kind of, um, you know, trendy sort of right now too, are beets, you know, people can, um, use beet powder in their smoothies, but those are good. You're an athlete. So, yes. you know, people that's very good for boosting endurance for, oh, yeah. for athletes nitric also. oxide into the blood and more, O2, right. more oxygen in there. Oh yeah. But, uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, beets are really a good one that I'm really interested in. Like, I mean, I will, I like them, you know, I'll eat them in like a, a salad, but mm -hmm. not everybody likes them. But if you don't like that, you can buy them, you know, in a powdered form. Again, that's something that's kind of easy. You know, I start my day off, um, you know, with a smoothie. So I, you know, I like adding a bunch of different things to it. Yeah. Um, and I think overall, like spices, it, the more spices that you can add to your food, most spices are very potent antioxidants. So yeah. when you're cooking, you want to jazz up your food a little bit. Um, you know, especially things like turmeric and cinnamon. Um, there's just a lot of, um, you know, things that you can do with your food. And the more spices you can add, the better. Um, it just gives you, and that's not even like you're not even adding extra food you know you're just yeah. adding these you're the second flavoring. person that i've interviewed this mentioned spices josh axe was the first okay. right oh and, wow okay and so cool. this is really cool that you're saying this and yeah just yeah. to kind of piggyback on what you're saying it's like you're not adding more food you're just adding yeah. more flavor but the flavor That's is adding right. much more nutrients right. he, he, i think he said in the podcast yeah. he said something like when i have friends over like wow this whatever chicken or this fish is so good yeah what do you do he yeah. goes i probably just put three times the amount of spices as you do <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly. It. <laughs> you know, like... Exactly. It does. And that's and that's something that's so easy to do. You know, people don't need to be afraid. Um, you know, it just it, it, there are all the things that you would think about a lot of the fruit fruits. I mean, fruits are fine. You know, if you have blood sugar issues, that's one thing. But um, there are so many beneficial antioxidants and fruits, too. So just upping your overall produce, um, trying to eat organic when you can. Um, and then, you know, adding spices and things like that. I think that's going to take you a long way. And then also, um, olive oil is one that's been studied to be anti, anti angiogenic. So, um, that's one that you probably want to eat more, um, cold. So if you're adding it like as a salad dressing, just because it can get oxidized and damaged when we're heating it too high, um, but that's one that's been proven too. So if you can eat, you know, a big salad with some healthy fats on it, some olive oil, um, you know, let's get, add some berries to it. You know, that's, that's going to be really healing for you. That's great. I just started, you know, I've always used olive oil on salad and I don't mm -hmm. remember what author I, I listened to at a Tony Robbins conference. I can't remember his name, but he said you could have up to 16 tablespoons a day. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like people do shots of it. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, so I, yeah. as funny right. as that sounds, I started mm -hmm. adding like, when I go to work, I'll bring a salad to work and I'll have a mason jar and like my staff looks at me like I have 12 heads but it's like the small it's only small mason jars and I'll have like you know a quarter cup of olive oil and then some apple yeah. cider vinegar and I throw a bunch of spices and like Himalayan salt in it yeah. and they're like is that all oil I go no like 80 percent of it's oil and like yeah. putting that, that's all for that one salad I go yeah and then I'll, I'll probably and I'm yeah. weird people look at me like I'm crazy I'll drink the bottom of my salad 
I don't like my. That's the best part. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? There you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's really cool. I mean, for I mean, energy alone, because you know the salad <laughs> you're going to process, right? The oils are like that slow right. burning oil, which or like like an oil lamp versus a candle, a mm -hmm. wax lamp, and that. I, energy levels are so good and it's like you said it's so unbelievably healthy right and it also you know stops that um insulin spike too because it can it can help just to ward off any you know carbs that you are having on your salad or whatever so um that's another reason why adding more fats are good it helps us to be more fat adapted when we're eating more fats yeah. like that and when you do that and i think this is great that you're saying this because people and i know a lot of people are addicted to sugar I mean, it helps you fire mm -hmm. up those same kind of receptors in your brain as like if you were taking cocaine, like that same, right, the same addiction level. And, that's uh, right, and it's and it's not our fault, you know, because it's it that's what it does in our bodies, and that's yeah. why we have to make a decision to just like not bring it into the house if possible. Yeah. That's why food companies mm -hmm. are so evil. They know. I mean, they yes. they put all. <laughs> of, I forgot who I spoke to, but they put like these specific. I mean, they know scientifically if we give you X amount of sugar, X amount of salt, and X amount of fat, and like a Dorito or whatever it may be, right? right. You're gonna, you're not, you're not gonna have one. You're gonna have the whole bag. No, you can't. Right, That's type right. of thing. Just because you're so, it kind of fires. They, it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. But the marketing is too smart. It is, and it becomes yep. us and becoming then like, <laughs> going against the yeah, marketing. Yeah, commercials, commercials yeah. on TV. You know, my my son was asking for some kind of cereal the other day, and I thought, what? How do you even know about that? And of course, there was a commercial for it. Yeah. <laughs> And I, yeah. I spoke to, I believe, a gentleman named Paul Check, who just published his podcast. I think it was him. He mentioned this is interesting, but you mentioned the food pyramid, or like you know, our, mm -hmm. our and mm -hmm. I think so, whoever it was said, I think it was like the cereal company. I'm not sure which company, grain company, made our food pyramid for us. That's why grains are you know mm. a mile wide on the bottom. Eat mostly these, and yeah. oof, God forbid you have fat. Let's put that like at the top. Yeah, and that's what's sad is that we can't trust our government guidelines for, um, you know, diet. We really have to, unfortunately, it not we can't even trust our traditional medical, as you know, system yeah. for that. Um, you know, we really have to be seeking out other holistic means of nutrition. And that's why, you know, again, this is so important for me to get, you know, this book into the mainstream, not just, you know, people who are already interested in it because, um, we need to understand what these things do to our body and how they inflame us. Yeah, it really is. It's it's you know the the book is is a great resource. I mean, if you want to think of it as that, like for everybody listening, it's not it's not like a novel, right? Like we're not sitting on a beach and reading a novel here. You're actually going to learn <laughs> yeah. and actually yeah. have stuff marinate inside deep yeah. inside that brain of yours, so you can actually yeah. you know stay healthy. Not you want to get healthy if you're not healthy, but you want to stay healthy. Like being very right. proactive is the most important part because I, you know, right. and I think everybody that's listening has heard this, like, you know, people eating some real crappy food and it's like, well, you're not going to live forever. And I'm like, yeah, but how sick do you want to live? Yeah. Well, that's exactly right. And it affects your quality of life. And, um, you know, if, if you, you want, you're not going to live forever, but you don't want to be living in a hospital hospital bed either yeah. or unable to participate with your children or grandchildren or you know whatever just because you're you're in so much pain you know so there it, it can affect your quality of life even if you're not worried about longevity yeah i mean jacqueline i think he had a quote that said uh something like you know so many americans are dying at 60 but living till 90 mm, you know, that's sad isn't it yeah they're breaking mm -hmm. down because you know people's longevity mm -hmm. is getting longer but it, like it's in a wheel like you said in a wheelchair in a nursing home yeah and a, in a cardiac ward or a cancer ward of a hospital and it's just disgusting right. i mean it's uh i get fed up with this stuff because i know mm -hmm. people have people are smarter people can make choices it's just not yeah. wanting to a lot of times so right um right i'm right. so glad so can we touch a little on the, your lifestyle stuff you, you talk about in the book because i know we mentioned chiropractic and i got a cool fact for for volume two that we can add <laughs> okay sure <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about chiropractic. I think, you know, lifestyle. So we already talked about exercise. Um, and then we talked about stress relief. But I think it's important to, um, you know, kind of touch on stress relief, because, um, you know, day to day stress, you know, when it's like an acute stress, um, that's normal. And that's a part of daily living. But we when we live in a state of chronic stress, that you know, uh, whether it be our jobs or our home life or whatever, and we're just chronically stressed, 
that's not great because then our cortisol levels are just, you know, constantly elevated, which is also adding to the inflammation in our bodies. So finding ways to um, eliminate stress impossible, and that's completely easier said than done. But one thing that we talked about was exercise. If you can do that, that can really go a long way at, at helping. Um, and then just some easy things, you know, I am, you know, I have a four and three year old at home and I'll be the first to admit that I'm not getting all the exercise I'd like to get. I'm not getting the sleep that I would like to get, which is another one I want to talk about. Um, but there are some simple things that you can do throughout the day. So, um, again, like, you know, meditation seems to be like the, the big buzzword these days. And if you can do some meditation, that's great. I personally can't really because I don't ever have I, I can't even go to the bathroom by myself <laughs> because my son's like <laughs> on my tail you know the whole time I'm like mommy mommy so um but what I can do is stick my head in the closet or just take a minute to do some deep breathing um so which is super beneficial so if you, I don't know if you've ever heard of uh technique it's just four seven eight breathing so you inhale for four seconds hold it for seven and then breathe out like through pursed lips like, <sighs> for eight seconds. If you do that three or four times, you'll be in like my heart rate will come down. It's been shown to reduce blood pressure. So just taking doing that a few times throughout the day can be so helpful. Um, I recently have been interested in tapping. Mm. Are you familiar with I'm, tapping? I, so I've not done it. Uh, but yes, I've I've, I've yeah. heard, I haven't read any of it, but I've listened to a lot of podcasts about it quite interesting. So there are, it is interesting. There are a lot of, you know, if you just, you know, there are a lot of YouTube videos that people could, you know, search for that, but it's just basically there are meridian points around our body that you're probably familiar with as a chiropractor, mm -hmm. but that's the meridian points they use for acupuncture. Um, but those, um, when those are stimulated, they help to create a calming effect on our body. So tapping is just basically taking, you know, the tips of, um, you know, four fingers on your, on your hand and just tapping along those while, out loud, um, or if, you know, if you're in public, I guess you don't have to, but just saying, you know, I feel stressed about this, um, but it's okay. And I'm, I'm going to be okay. And I love and accept myself. And I, but I feel stressed about, um, this engagement that I have to have this, you know, public speaking, or I feel stressed about, you know, the way my kids are acting or whatever that really just doing that for a few minutes, it takes your, um, I don't know, it just takes your mind to a different level because you're still acknowledging your feelings. You're not just pushing them away. Like we talked about that, like emotional eating, you're just shoving it down and just not really addressing the stress. But this is actually bringing it to the forefront, um, acknowledging the feelings that you're having. But when you're, um, you know, tapping on these meridian points, it can really, it creates an effect in your body that really can help to, you know, decrease those cortisol levels. Um, so I think things like that are super important for, for stress reduction. And I can go on and on about that. Um, but also I wanted to mention, you know, sleep is, is yes. such a, an important thing. So getting, um, seven to eight hours of sleep is really important. And, um, the research shows actually, I mean, I think we all know that getting less than seven hours is not you know, great for our bodies. And we, you probably don't feel great. I know I don't feel great. If I, don't, if I sleep that's less than that, I feel super groggy. I just need coffee right away. And, you know, that's an artificial means of, you know, getting myself up. But interestingly, the research also shows that if you're sleeping more than eight hours, um, like nine or above, that can actually increase um, your mortality risk by 30%. So, and researchers aren't exactly sure why, but it may have to do with, you know, people that are depressed tend to sleep more. Um, but there's kind of a sweet spot, it seems. So between seven to eight hours of sleep is really important um, in making that a priority. And I think, you know, your audience knows, and you've talked all about this, of, you know, getting rid of like the devices before bed mm -hmm. and you know, the blue light. And, and there are so many tactics to help you with sleep. But um, what I wanted to, to, you know, address is just that why sleep is so important from the stance of cancer prevention is that our immune systems function at their optimal level while we're sleeping. That's when our bodies can remove toxins. Our bodies produce mm. um, cytokines and antibodies while we're sleeping. And um, C-reactive protein is something that, you know, that doctors will test for, you know, if someone has like a heart disease or just to test their over, overall inflammation, um, those markers drop while we're sleeping. So it's so important from a healing stance. It's not just to like, 
you know, get that like re- rejuvenation for your brain, but it really does detoxify our bodies while we're sleeping. So it's so important from a disease prevention standpoint um, to get those seven to eight hours. Yeah, that, I mean, it's key. And I agree. Yeah, and I recently over the past, you know, I don't know how many months, but I've been putting my phone on airplane mode, which mm-hmm. I never really did. I mean, I, I thought all this Wi Fi stuff was woo woo until I really started to, to learn about it. And my sleep has changed like, insanely by doing one simple thing like my I wear I don't have mine right now they left in my house but I have blue light glasses that I'll wear at night yeah like yeah. a Dave Asprey type of thing like yeah right that type of thing and it may it's it really is as weird as it sounds to most people it, it my sleep has been so much better and uh yeah it, yeah it so really key. Just, there are yeah, exactly. And, you know, if, if that's, and that's, and that's something you can do that's free. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you don't right. have to buy any supplements. <laughs> you just have to commit to doing it. And I know it's easier said than done for people, but um, I really feel like our stress levels in general in our society mm-hmm. and also our decision making with food can also improve when you're, when you're rested, you know, because when you're not, mm-hmm. then you're going to go for junk food to get you through the day or sugary things, um, extra caffeine or whatever. Um, things that aren't aren't doing your body any favors. They're just helping you get through the day, but they're inflaming you. Yeah, I mean it's 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 wild to have having a good night's sleep can affect. You said the. I mean, people don't think about that. They're thinking like, oh, I'm just gonna feel like crap in the day during the day. I'll be tired the whole right. day. But your decision level, right. decision making capabilities, gotta like yeah. tank a little bit. That's right. You know, and health, absolutely, and work, whatever exactly. it may be. Driving, God forbid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> type of thing. Um, so I want to touch chiropractic a little bit because I, you know, I went through, um, that's kind of what I do. And I, and I get people's books. If I get years, like, which I have the digital version, I kind of go through and then I always put like a couple of keywords in as I search, you know, as a curiosity. And, uh, I, I was like, Oh, so cool. She's got, you know, chiropractic in there. Like, like Dr. Jack Wolfson, who's a, the paleo cardiologist has a whole section also in chiropractic, which is uh, it's so neat as well. Um, but there was something that I think for you talk about cancer prevention, besides reducing stress and like you kind of said, I think like you feel like just like, like relaxed and almost like sleepy after you leave, you know, the chiropractor. Um, right. Right. What, exactly. Which is really, which is great because that means your, your immune system is up, which means your, 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 you know, those infl- inflammatory factors, everything's kind of like settling in and settling down. But one of the neat, neat things in research, it's not even that new, but it's really cool as far as immune function goes. Um, I'll get you the study if you'd like, but people that are under yeah. long-term chiropractic care have an increase of two to, 200 to 400% in their immune capacity. Oh which my is gosh. Huge. And they did this study with cancer and HIV and AIDS, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, but I wow. believe that's the, the, the two groups they use. And they, so they did it with people that are, you know, don't have any condition. And then they did it with people that are severely immune compromised. And the, the rate was like, you know, it was, it was huge. And these are long-term studies. So like, that's a huge win, uh, I think is in Absolutely. addition. To I would book. love to see that study. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I, yeah know, I would love to see that study. Yeah. And I mean, that's, and that's why I, you know, people come in our office and go like, why, why are kids getting adjusted? Well, because their parents want them to be healthy, you know, as they grow, not that they're not trying to fix a broken body part or something, but nonetheless, um, but it's cool. I'm I'm so grateful that you actually have something in there because it's it's a win for health. You know, as as, as all the ten sections are in your book. But, yeah. Oh, you know. thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think that you know how chiropractic care uh, you know helps our our neurologic environment in our bodies yeah. too, which is so important that you know people might not always understand. Yeah. You know that yeah. that it that it all it, it it all plays our spine, protects our nervous system too yeah. so that's that's really important to understand as well totally totally so i know we've kind of touched like you know left field right field, all over the place and um, <laughs> which is good because i think you, people are going to get a really good overview kind of like that fifty thousand foot view of who you are and and like and your mission and i think it's very obvious what your mission is um so if there are a few things and i know we kind of talked about this and i said i may or may not do it but if there are a few things like if you were just say your like your three top things, like these are things you should implement tomorrow. You know, whether mm-hmm. it would be sleep or nutrition or whatever it is, like these are things you should do tomorrow which will make a difference for life. Sure, absolutely. 
I, yeah, absolutely. And a, a lot of them, you know, that I had planned to talk about, we already, we already did. So one thing I was, you know, I was thinking if you haven't tried intermittent fasting, give it a try. Okay. Um, you know, a couple times a week, if, if you're not, if you're not fat adapted, if you're, you know, if your diet really isn't, you know, uh, you know, in check just yet, just doing it once, once a week or every other day or something like that. So trying to fast for, um, I always say like 14 to 16 hours, mm-hmm. because I think most of us can easily fast for 12 hours. That might be like the time that we're, you know, sleeping and getting ready and, you know, after dinner and stuff. And that all kind of works together. But if you can implement that, that, um, that's just, that's helping to give your body a one up on, you know, helping pump up your immune system. Mm -hmm. So that would be one that I would suggest for, for people to try if they're not already doing it. Um, one that I, we, you know, we already talked about sleeping seven to eight hours, supporting our natural detox system through exercise and drinking water. Um, one that we haven't talked about that I just want to spend a minute talking about, um, because I don't know, I'm, I'm sure your your audience is so savvy, and I'm not sure whether you've talked about this on your podcast or not, um, but if people are taking an over-the-counter, like a multivitamin, um, I often recommend just tossing those, and that is because um, they're often made with synthetic vitamin okay. per, like, a, like a, i don't want to say brand necessarily but it doesn't make a difference on my show yeah but kind of like something yeah. you get like at a, a, a drug store or at a yeah. grocery store right. like a centrum i'll say it centrum like a centrum right. is exactly right yeah. yeah um there are a few that you might find over the counter um that are, are that are better than aren't like these but if your multivitamin has folic acid um and the other one I tell people to look for is cyanocobalamin. That's the B12. That's the synthetic version of B12. Both folic acid and cyanocobalamin are synthetic. So those are not the versions found in our food, found in nature. They're created in a lab. Um, and they both have been implicated in cancer formation. So if I can just for just a second, I know we're go, going really go, long, but... Uh, <laughs> Your go. your audience uh, probably knows. <laughs> um, so there's a gene mutation that you may, may or may not have heard about um, called MTHFR, mm-hmm. and, and it's found that um, at least 50, if not 60 percent of the population has at least a heterozygous mutation, meaning that they got it from one parent and not another. So MTHFR is just, it's, it shows us our methylation pathways in our body, which are ways that we do- detoxify. Mm-hmm. So if you have a breakdown in your methylation pathway, you cannot detoxify these synthetic forms of vitamins very well. Um, so this is important because um, high levels of uh, folic, free floating folic acid in the body have been implicated in numerous cancers. Uh, particularly one that's, that you know stands out to me as prostate cancer. My dad had prostate cancer, so I've done some research into that. But um, because you know these they're free floating in our bodies, they're not doing what they should it, are in there to do, and our bodies don't know how to get rid of them. And so it's just like you know you hear things like leaky gut, and we're getting these um, antigens like in our body that are that are floating around from our food that our body see as attacks that could create autoimmune disease. Well, these synthetic vitamins kind of do the same thing and they can actually damage our DNA. Um, just as a little personal story, um, after my second son was born, I was having just some issues and I wanted to get some blood work done and everything actually turned out to be okay. And I asked my doctor if I, you know, I could look at, um, you know, the panel and she actually spends time with me, which is rare, but, um, Everything was fine except my vitamin B12 was like three times higher than what it should have been. And I asked her about it and she wasn't concerned because I wasn't deficient because that's what she was looking for. She was looking for a deficiency. Um, But that was alarming to me. And I said, but why is it so high? You know, shouldn't there be like a sweet spot? There's just, you know, a range and I'm way out of the range. She didn't really have um, a reason for me, but I wanted to investigate it more and so I had, I did a 23andMe genetic testing where you just like you spit into, you know, send a saliva mm-hmm. sample and, you know, they test your heritage and all of that, you know, your ancestry, mm-hmm. but it can also look for gene mutations. So I found out that I had a heterozygous mutation for MTHFR, which also affects your, the synthesis of um, synthetic B12. Well, I had been a long time ago, I mean, like... 
I don't know, going on 10 years, I had been vegetarian and vegan for like a time, but I was taking vitamin B12 supplements back from that time. And like, you know, sometimes you get these supplements in your regimen and you just kind of like, don't think about why you're still taking them. Well, I was still taking this and it was the cyanocobalamin. It was the synthetic version. Mm. Well, here, this was building up in my body, really not doing me any favors whatsoever. And I was already eating meat again. I didn't need to be taking it. Um, but that is exactly why it was building up to high levels in my body. My body was not methylating it correctly. And so there have been studies that have shown that these high levels can um, link to cancer, but also interestingly, things like autism. So there have been studies that have shown that um, women who had high levels of um, folic acid had a higher risk of offspring developing autism. B12 was higher, but a combination of high folic acid and B12 tripled the um, the diagnosis of autism in their wow. offspring. Interesting. Wow. And it could be that the offspring were also had this mutation too. You know, the babies yeah. could have this mutation. The mom could pass it along. Um, <clears throat> So it is interesting. Now, autism is a very complex. So I'm not saying that that's what causes autism, but it's just interesting that that link. Um, so those are things that you don't want to be ingesting. So if you're looking for, if you want to take a multivitamin, you want to be looking for something that's methylated. So you want to look for a version that has methylfolate. Um, sometimes it might be called folinic acid or methylcobalamin. So those are, you know, just a tip for your audience. You don't have to do this genetic testing. Um, you know, you can if you want, because um, it's kind of interesting, you know, learn your heritage and things. But, um, you know, you could just assume maybe that you have this mutation. And one way to get around it is just to make sure you're taking uh, the methylated forms of those vitamins or getting the vitamins from food instead. And I think it's an important thing um, for women who are expecting or who are going to conceive, though, because doctors always say take folic acid to mm -hmm. prevent birth defects. And it does prevent birth, prevents neural, de neural tube defects like spina bifida. Um, it does do that. But you can also do that with methylfolate. And then you don't have to risk having too much folate. Yeah, in your body. yeah, I mean, having so too that, much of anything, yeah. right, is, is bad. And that's, a, that's like at a mm -hmm. cellular level. Mm -hmm. You know, right? Yeah, you're gonna you can mess yeah. with lots of things. I'm sure there's so many synthetic things and synthetic vitamins that we don't even know how much they're actually damaging. Right. The whole body. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I just read. I, I just read an article about the the Flintstone vitamins, how toxic they are. Like with the and I took those when I was a kid. Uh, who, I, I don't think anybody <laughs> I think I didn't could. take those as a kid, right? <laughs> I know. I mean, but, I think that's what that's what was around. But yeah, I mean, thank God. Well, who, <laughs> hopefully, I turned out okay. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I totally agree. You don't you don't want to be giving you know yeah you definitely you know need to watch out for your kids. You don't want to be giving those to your children. <laughs> no, not at all. So, Miss Kim, I think we're gonna we're gonna stop here. This is a ton of great info. Um, just so you know, I'm gonna connect everybody to links, obviously, to your site. If there's anywhere social media, we'll we'll plug that in as well. Um, and right. we want people to get the book. I mean, this is a, it really is a great book. Um, I have poked through quite a bit of it. I didn't read it. It's only it's only like 386 pages or something like that, or 375. Um, so it's gonna mm -hmm. it's it's a kind of like a little bible on health there on, on the cancer prevention. So <laughs> uh, I would definitely recommend getting it and using it as a tool versus you know something that looks cool on your shelf. But it is a nice looking book too. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted it as a reference so you don't even have to read it front to back. You know, you can kind of, you know, if you're interested in supplements, look for that. If you're interested in food, look for that section. Yeah. So, and there's also some recipes in there too in the shopping list if people are interested. Great. Well, thank you so much, Miss Kim. I hope all of you have enjoyed Kim's interview. All her details are in the show notes. You can connect with her through social media, through her website, her blog. Make sure you do because her information is awesome. And I also want to encourage you to go get her book, 360 Health, Your Guide to Cancer Prevention, Healing Foods, and Total Body Wellness. The link to buy is in the show notes. Please check it out. Or you can go to lifestylelocker.com forward slash Kim Maravich. And you can find all the details there too. And make sure while you're there, 
Go ahead and sign up to make sure you stay up to date with Lifestyle Locker and all of our podcasts and people that are on our interviewees. They're so badass and so cool. So connect with them, connect with us, and stay healthy, my friends. Peace out.